The interstate system is an incredibly expansive engineering feat, stretching all around the country and serving almost all of the major cities in the U.S. Almost all of them. See, through the history of the U.S., we've seen some states be politically favored in the interstate system's planning process. Cities like Hennepin, Illinois, with a population of 745, have entire interstate spurs dedicated to them. And yet, cities with over 500,000 people are left with no interstate routes. So today I want to go through the most major and biggest cities that are completely unserved by the U.S. interstate system. Before that though, I just wanted to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make content like this every week on the channel, so if you find this video interesting, you'll probably like the other videos. So yeah, please just consider clicking the subscribe button. Thank you. Usually in these videos, I'd count down the top 10 largest cities with no interstates. But that won't work for this one. Because throughout history, some states were more specifically favored, while others were sort of left in the dust. One state that simply has too many large cities to all be served is California. Most of the largest cities with no interstate routes come from this state, meaning it would basically just be a video about California. Because of this, I'm going to go over some cities here that I think are interesting and explain what's going on with them. So let's start with College Station. This city has a population of 120,000 and a metro population of 272,000. And it's especially left out by the interstate system. It's located 38 miles off of I-45 with no full freeway connection up to it. What's interesting is that it's located just 57 miles northwest of the Houston metro, and yet there's no freeway connection between those two cities either. State Route 6 goes through the city and extends south another 19 miles as a freeway, but ends before it gets to Houston. And you're still required to take a two-lane, non-divided route for an extended period of time. In a state like Texas that is not afraid to build freeways and interstates, you'd expect it to be connected up. The good or bad news, though, is that there is a full freeway being worked on to connect from Houston to Navasota and into College Station. Next up, we have Bend, Oregon, a city with a population of 102,000. Located nowhere near an interstate route, this is a growing metro in the central part of the state. Our main problem here is that it's located east of the Cascade Range and not in the Willamette Valley, where I-5 passes. This means it's located 85 miles off of the interstate, but with some giant mountains in the way that basically completely disconnects them. It's actually over two hours away from I-5, and it's about the same amount of time to drive up to I-84 instead. What's more is that there's one freeway through the city, and other than that, there are no real freeways at all in this region of the state. Overall, Bend is honestly pretty disconnected from everything. Next up, we move to Anchorage, which is different from the rest of this list. So basically, the Alaskan interstate system is completely different from everywhere else, with there basically being a few state highways that are under the interstate system for funding purposes. So technically, the 228,000 population city of Anchorage is connected to the interstate system, but these roads just don't work in that way at all. My argument here is that Alaska 1, the highway considered to be an interstate, looks like this through the downtown. So the whole thing is pretty confusing, but it's hard to really consider it to be connected to the interstate system. Next up, I wanted to talk about Athens, Georgia, a city of 127,000, home to the University of Georgia, disconnected to the interstate system pretty fully. So I-85 passes to the north of Athens, and I-20 passes to the south. Now, both of these highways are like 20 to 30 miles away from the city, and it feels sort of forgotten, especially on the I-85 corridor. Now, Athens definitely has connections that make up for its lack of interstate routes. US 26, 129, and 441 are all divided highways that connect into the city, and the area has a full belt line around it. So when we're talking just traffic related, the city is doing fine on that front. One thing I did think was funny that I found while looking at the city is this interchange with 441 and 29, where it obviously is supposed to extend to the east and was stopped. Right in the way of its path is a Georgia DOT office, which is a peculiar spot for it. Now, I wanted to talk about state capitals not served by the interstate system, because you'd think when planning the highway system, connecting up to these government-centric cities would be at the top of their list. And yet four states have been left with no interstate system connections. The first and most confusing one, in my opinion, is Dover, Delaware. Located in the northeast, Dover has a population of 39,000 and is located in the center of its state. What's most surprising about this is that there just isn't a major interstate route going through Delaware and the Delmarva Peninsula. Cities in the southern part of the state aren't served at all. And in fact, the only major freeway connecting into Dover isn't even a U.S. highway, but instead State Route 1. 
Now, with such a historic city, especially one with an Air Force base located within the city lines, you'd really expect it to be considered when the interstate system was being planned. But I guess not. Next we have Jefferson City, Missouri, a city of 44,000. Now, Jefferson City is located right in the center of the state, on the Missouri River. And it does actually have a reason for being disconnected from the system. Basically, the much larger city of Columbia is located to the north. And when they were planning I-70 through the state, the choice was made to go north of the Missouri River and its bluffs. This made it very difficult to reach Jefferson City on the main route. So instead, it went around 26 miles to the north. Now, I don't think it would be very difficult to build a spur route down to the capital, and to be honest, that seems like something they would have thought of. But for now, there are multiple major highways connecting to the city, and they aren't too worried about it. Next up, we have two that probably make sense, Juno and Pier. So in Juno's case, even though the city has a population of 32,000, it's quite literally disconnected from the state's road system. This means there's not enough traffic to warrant an interstate. Next up is Pier, South Dakota, the second smallest capital in the U.S., Yet again, it's located directly in the center of the state, but in this case, that doesn't actually make much sense, because it ends up being in one of the less populated regions of South Dakota. I-90 extends to the south of it, crossing instead at Chamberlain. There's an argument to be made that a spur route should be extended up to the city, but with the traffic volume, this ended up being the right decision. Now finally, we'll move to California, where most of the biggest cities on this list are seen. So going through the Central Valley, I-5 takes a very odd route. Instead of going through the populated areas, the interstate instead hugs the western edge of the valley, not connecting back up until it gets to Stockton. Instead, State Route 99 serves as an eastern route across the valley, going through most of the major cities. There has been talk of this highway being completely upgraded to interstate standards and introduced as I-9 or I-1. But for now, it's still just a state highway, meaning all of these cities go unserved. Modesto is one of these, a city of 219,000 which is located around 18 miles off of I-5. It's located just under where I-5 turns more to the northeast and is still unserved. Another very major one is Bakersfield, a city that really surprises me, because not only does I-5 go to the west and completely miss the metro, but there isn't even a single U.S. highway through the metro. This is a city of 408,000, completely unserved by interstates or U.S. highways, and yet it's not the biggest on our list. The biggest city unserved by the interstate highway system is a little farther north, Fresno. Now, Fresno is a city of over 500,000, bigger than cities like Sacramento, Kansas City, Atlanta, and Miami, if you're just considering the city proper. The entire Fresno metro has a population of 1.01 million, making it the only metropolitan area of over 1 million residents to go unserved by the interstate system. Now, this isn't a crazy big deal because State Route 99 is a full freeway through the city. But the fact that there is no interstate within 40 miles of the city, and there's no freeway connection straight to I-5, is pretty crazy for a city of this importance. Now, there are a lot more cities that could be mentioned here, especially in California. There are a lot of major cities that are completely missed by the interstate system. I'd love for people to comment down below some other cities you thought deserved to be mentioned here, because there's just a lot going on with this topic. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Case and Zylo, Bosking Inc., Uncouver, Pull Pots Pie Hole, Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Darkbird, Obi Grad, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Schwine, Florida Jake, Somnom Woods, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, KMS162, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, and Bryzen. I appreciate you all, you help out the channel a ton. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. It's just another way to support me and my channel if you appreciate the content. It'll all go straight into my savings for college and a car and all of that kind of stuff. So you're really just supporting me as a person if you want to do something extra. Thank you.